Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. We go to the world's deepest gold mine to find the Devil Worm. That's right, this is actually from 60 Minutes. It was sent to me by Silver Surfer. And quite an interesting uh, video indeed. I'm not going to play the video, but... I want to talk to you about this particular deep devil worm that was found in this mine. But there's a larger story here that really is not touched on a whole lot, but it is mentioned. We'll kind of go through this here, uh, and we're going to actually work ourselves backwards in this and uh, as we go through. And then we're going to talk about the gold. But they go deep down to this mine. Uh, they, the Bill Whitaker from C, uh, CBS, the correspondent from 60 Minutes, uh, says that he goes down to the depth of this mine that five of New York's World Trade Centers stacked on top of each other. That's how deep in the earth they are. And it's this chairlift that they go down with this scientist. And uh, he finds some salt and this dripping salt water, and it's almost like a different planet down there. It's really fascinating. Um, and uh, this is this is the transcript from the video. I encourage you guys to check out uh, the video. I'll post a link to this article. It was quite a fascinating video indeed uh, from this cave. But uh, so there they see a picture of the salt that they found down there, which is quite apropos considering the salt was once uh, used as money way, way back in the day. Uh, but in 2011, scientists uh, found what no one thought was possible. These little tiny worms living in a pocket of water, 5,000 years old. And, uh, and they're magnified. The worms are no bigger than a human hair. And you see them in this video. It was a species never uh, before seen. It survives without sunlight deep in the hot underworld. So they called it Mephisto or the devil. Uh, and uh, that's they eat bacteria down there, and it's quite fascinating indeed. They use an endoscope camera, and they were the first to film deep inside the Earth's crust that deep. And it's the devil worm's home. Before this, no one thought animal life could exist this deep. And so it's a pretty big discovery uh, by the scientist, uh, quite indeed. And there, there's... Um, some examples of some of the video that you see when they go to deep down in that mine. Uh, and they were surprised to find other living creatures too. So many of them that they called them a zoo, a crustacean about 1 64th of an inch, an arthropod, a flatworm, and a single cell bacteria. Set off a storm of speculation about where else extreme life might exist, perhaps even on Mars. Uh, NASA helped uh, fund their research. So uh, it's quite interesting to, uh, to uh, read about this and these life forms found so deep inside of the earth. Um, and, uh, but the other thing about this is that, you know, this mine is so deep and has been producing for so much, you know, it's wondering what is going to happen to this mine. Uh, it looks like at this point it's going to be used to talk about, to find other life and to study this life. And, of course, you know, the cheap labor and apartheid associated with the mining down here for so many. There's so many different uh, things touched on in this story. But one thing I wanted to, to discuss about this is, uh, is, is the refining of these mines and how much gold is being uh, extracted from here. Uh, so these, the mining and the pour that happens weekly, it's called the pour, when they bring all this gold to the surface, they, it gets a refined out into these bars and uh, they had to wear the special pajamas so that no one could be caught stealing anything. The furnace reached 2,000 degrees. The gold turned into liquid and poured down into the molds. And uh, the guy there that works at the mine, when he first saw it, he was certainly wowed by it. Um, something that keeps me going. When you hear people who have never seen gold or touch it, I feel like I'm more privileged. And that's just it. I think that sentence alone should tell us something. The people that actually work these mines, they understand the value of gold. Their hard labor that goes into producing this, uh, this material and what goes into all of the different efforts going into produce just one ounce of gold, all the many tons of dirt moved. 
and talks about how these bars will be refined again to four nines purity before they are sold for coins and jewelry, among other things. The mine used to process about uh, used to process about sixty tons of gold a year. Now it's just a quarter of that, uh, and so and then the week that they were there was a pretty good haul, and uh, they uh, showed that they actually got to hold the bar. I encourage you to watch the video, but very interesting indeed. And so that leaves me the question: is that with all the gold production, you know, there was some talk. Um, some analysis some time ago that we were at uh, peak production for gold, even with some of these new mines coming on on site, will they produce? Will they be able to produce to make up for what is lost at this mine? Uh, a, a vast producing mine in South Africa, one of the top producers of gold. You know there are now not uh, nearly as much in in their gold production. So it'll be interesting to see how these mines. Uh, pan out over the the coming years, uh, where it may not be economically viable to to move on. The one thing they also talked about in this video is that uh, there's uh, there's really you really can't go much deeper than they have at this point. Humans just can't survive down there. It gets so hot, even with air conditioning, it's well over a hundred degrees down there, and uh, it's just not economically viable. It's not healthy. And uh, safety is a big concern now, where it wasn't back during the days of apartheid uh, as much, but now it is, which is great. But the problem is, is you know, a lot of the techniques to extract this gold really have not changed in many years, other than just safety precautions. But um, it just goes to show you that to mine gold takes a lot of work. So every ounce that you hold in hand represents a lot of time and labor and resources to get into your possession there. And I think that's probably why gold is so treasured. Because really, uh, outside of an occasional nugget found in Western Australia, you know, there's really there's no easy way to find gold these days, at least of any substance beyond, you know, a couple of grams. You know, it's very difficult. And uh, so it has to be uh, processed as such. But uh, very fascinating indeed, the world's deepest mine. And uh, this is the, the um, really a fascinating article and story uh, by 60 Minutes. And I encourage you guys to check out. Again, I will uh, post a link in the description of this video for you guys to check out. And uh, what are your thoughts? I think for me, upon watching this video, and even though the, really the story was about discovering new life, you know, that can be a metaphor for discovering the next phase of gold and uh, how it's discovered and how it's treasured and how important it is for us to, um, uh, to hold fast. Even with the prices going down as they have been, they've been dipping. Um, gold has pretty much held relatively steady, all things considered. And uh, it makes me just appreciate the metal a bit more uh, for what it is, and uh, especially considering what's all involved in it. And it makes me excited to see where technology could take us and maybe find new ways to extract gold in different ways here on this planet. I know some say there's a lot of gold on the ocean's floors, but you know, if those ocean floors are very, very deep, some of them, and getting them through all that water. Uh, much less what they're doing here, digging down so deep. Can you imagine five World Trade Centers stacked on top of each other? That's uh, um, over two miles. Fascinating indeed. And and uh, what are your thoughts? Where do you think things will go from here with regards to South Africa and their mining? Will there be other mines discovered? Because the what they show in this video, uh, that... It's all but abandoned, you know. They're 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 running low on gold, and uh, where else in South Africa could it be discovered? If anywhere else, is, if if it is around, how many new mines will come on on online? Um, the permitting process to get them up and running, gold production. Is this an example of the end, or where that peak production is starting to play off, where these new mines may not produce as much as these? Every ounce, every ton of gold that's mined is that much less that's available underground 
And as gold is being treasured by many above ground and by many central banks, by the way, that's less for us. But that means we should uh, uh, stack as much as we can. In my view, if you can get gold, even if you're a silver stacker, I think it's wise to hold some gold uh, because I believe it is it is a way to hedge yourself uh, really against silver in, in, in many cases when it goes volatile and dip below $14 recently. Nonetheless, new life, a new life for the discovered, plenty of new life in this underground mine, unexpected. We shall see where it brings. Will there be new life for gold? The devil worm in the deepest mine. I'd like to extend a multitude of gratitude to y'all for watching and encourage you to please rate, comment, and subscribe.